What's up YouTube? Welcome back. 10 millimeter ammo test series continued. We're on number 15 now. We have 14 logged. This is number 15. Check out our playlist if you really like 10 millimeter. Good information there. The information we're going to be gathering today is on PMC Bronze 170 grain jacketed hollow point. This is going at an advertised muzzle velocity of 1200 feet per second. We're gonna put that to the test today and we're gonna see how it does in gel. We're gonna be using our standard two firearms today, the five inch Colt Delta Elite, 10 millimeter of course, 1911, and then the Springfield XDM Elite, 10 millimeter, 3.8 inch OSP. Five shots on each target with each firearm. Other than a difference in barrel length, we have a red dot versus iron sights. Now we have a weird sun glare like we always do on the range at this time of day, but we're going to try to get those five shots for each pistol through this chronograph and get velocity averages for you and foot pounds. Then we're going to send one round through each gun into this ballistics gel through this chronograph, hoping it works. Now that's 20 inches of ballistics gel for each block, two blocks back to back, a total of 40 inches of ballistics gel. Let's get to shooting. All right, 20 feet off that left B8 target. Let's put five in there. That chamber just a hair rough, but some rounds do in a 1911. Eleven forty four, that's pretty spicy. Eleven ninety. Twelve oh seven. Eleven sixty. And 11.30, so it's kind of all over the place with velocities. There's a little bit of flash coming out of the barrel, and it is a little spicy to shoot. It rocks the hand just a hair. Not the worst 10 millimeter, but definitely not a mild 10 millimeter. Let's see what it looks like on target. I'm gonna go ahead and say for me personally, it's shooting a little bit high. I usually shoot this 1911 very well. It could be a little bit of glare getting on my sights doing this, but my first shot was all the way up here. I really reconfirmed that I was level with my sights for each other shot and I ended up still a little bit high, but not a bad group overall. When we get over here with the red dot, I think we're gonna learn a little bit more. Now I know my red dot's been a little bit off in the past few tests, but I'm gonna keep it off because I know where it's hitting compared to what I'm where I'm aiming and I'll know if this truly is shooting high or not. So five rounds, right B8 with a red dot, Springfield XDM. Ten forty-five, and yes, I'm taking my time because I definitely want to try to get accuracy here. And we did lose some velocity there. Ten ninety-five. Eleven twenty-seven. Eleven twenty six, and eleven twenty eight. Let's take a look. Now, every time I pulled the trigger, I was right in here. Maybe one dip down a little bit, and that could have been that one. But it's not the best group for a red dot. We've seen much better. I'm gonna peel this paper back because I want to see something in real time with you guys. So. It did group in there with the other rounds that I fired from the previous test, so I can't say that it's going too much higher than normal. For the for me on the 1911, it just was, but like I said, that could have been my shooting. So it did group in there with the rest of them for Red Dot, and we're not point of aim, point of impact, but it's a decent enough group for defense. Now doing practical accuracy shooting, 
like the way I do it without any kind of a rest or anything, yes, there's a lot of things that could factor into making it not a good group or a good group. And it's definitely up to me and what kind of shooting I'm doing on that day. But I want to do practical accuracy because that's what we're going to be getting in the real world if we have to use defensive ammo. Nobody's going to bring a picnic table and set a rest in front of you and tell you to go ahead and take care of the bad guy. All right, here's where things are going to look just a little bit funny. In all honesty, which I don't BS you guys here on the turkey's opinion, I lost footage somehow. I was editing and I was like, holy crap, where's some of my gel test footage? So I'm going to reshoot these blocks right now. And then after I get them shot and I talk about it, we'll go back to the original footage. So there's going to be two different versions of me on two totally different days in this video starting now. All right, 15 feet off the gel block. XDM Elite's up first. Ten seventy six. Ten seventy six. We placed it where we wanted to. And I can tell you right from the beginning that this round did exactly what it did in the last shot from the other day. We have a very basic jacketed hollow point type of an entry wound, but it's a nice entry wound. It wasn't that impressive on the slow motion as you saw, but it's consistent at least with the other day. It goes down to more of a piercing wound channel like we see from many of these projectiles. And then here it landed in the exact same place it landed right before, and that's about one and a half inches to two inches max into the second block. So we're at about 22 inches and we have a bounce back of about a half of an inch. So we can call the final resting place at 21 inches. I don't even need to put the tape up, that's just where it is. All right, from the top down, you see pretty much the same thing. A nice, good entry, and then it tapers down to your regular piercing wound path. The bullet appears to have lost some pedals and I think it's face forward. All right, let's see what a difference it makes. They have a five inch barrel. Let's see if it makes it poke farther or slows it down. Eleven twenty-seven. Eleven twenty-seven. We hit where we needed to hit, and from the side, it doesn't look too much different from the other one. They basically do the same thing. There might be a slight variation in size of wound path. This one might be just a little bit bigger, but the permanent wound cavity slows down a little bit earlier than the XDM. So right here at about the 10 inch mark is where I'd say it calms down here, where it doesn't calm down until about the 13 inch mark with the XDM above it. It does come to a final resting place of 16 and a half inches with a bounce back from 17 and a half did the exact same thing it did on our previous test, so at least it's consistent. So sorry about the garbage you see in the gel block from the top view, it's not the best block, but wound channels look about the same. We come down to the piercing wound path, and then we have the early stoppage from the bullet opening up a little farther on the face due to the higher velocity. It just opens those pedals back a little bit quicker and a little bit farther, therefore slowing it down. Doesn't quite make it as far. Let's get one of these dug out, or both of them. As you can see, quite the difference between the Delta Elite and the XDM. Big, big opening here, that's what slowed it down. This one's still not bad. They both lost a little bit of lead where you can see it's come off of the edges, at least I think it has. They did things uniformly. All right, I'm just gonna remake the end of the video just for consistency. What we did see on practical accuracy before was very acceptable. And as far as gel, we saw consistency between both days of testing, even though you only got to see one day. And also in gel, we saw that it performs out of both barrel lengths differently, however, I think adequately. Nothing impressive in the slow motion, nothing impressive in the after effect with the permanent wound cavity, but again, acceptable. It's a hole puncher. Let me know what you think about this ammunition in the comments. Would you carry it, or is it just some mediocre stuff that's eh? The one good thing I do want to mention about it is there's 25 rounds that come in the box as opposed to 20, so as far as getting your money's worth, hey, five extra rounds of defensive ammunition, I'll always take that. That wraps up this block of testing for the 10 millimeter ammo test series. This was 11 through 15. We will be going for 16 through 20. Don't worry, we've got plenty of ammo. But in between that, we're going to do a low light test. So stay tuned for that. We're going to check these last five ammos in the dark and see how they perform. In general, you should check out our 10 millimeter ammo test series because they're pretty cool. We've got a lot already in the books. Hope you enjoy this kind of stuff. Thanks for watching this video. And until we see you next time, stay safe, have fun, and keep shooting.